I'm back again. Hey, I'm Mike Milnerick, and I have been uh, going through some stuff like we all do, and I am trying to figure my way out of it to figure out what I need to do, how do I need to make myself better, how I can make myself better, all that stuff. And I'm learning a ton, and I'm sharing some of that with you guys. And I have to say that one of the important things here is, uh, first of all, thank you for anyone that has watched the video or the couple, last couple of videos that I put up. Um, I think that's quite a feat because <laughs> they're pretty long. I don't want to make this one as long and I want to try to get to points and try to get through this and just see if it could help. Um, uh, I got messages from people that have absolutely touched me in a profound way and uh, and I think if I hadn't put those videos up scratch that if I hadn't put those videos up I would not have heard from these people and I would not have heard especially some of their struggles and 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 finding that in some small way that because I'm, I'm going through some stuff that I actually somehow have resonated with them and somehow have helped them a little bit. I hope, I hope that's what it sounds like from the messages. So anyway, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. I hope people watch more. Um, I hope that you're not nauseated too much by this. Um, you know, over the years, like I always say that I've, I've, um, I've always, felt like I was a pretty confident guy in, in a lot of ways. And one of the things that, you know, it was, you, you, you get more confident by the experience you have, you get more confident by understanding things and kind of figuring things out. So, I mean, I've, I've been very fortunate over the years cause I've, I've led, um, I've been in leadership roles with a lot of things. Um, and, uh, and I've had, friends and colleagues ask me, how do you do this? How do you do that? And, you know, I mean, I guess that, that, well, not, I guess that is a huge compliment. Um, I take that as a huge compliment that I'm doing something right, but I've got myself into a point where I've lost, I feel like I've lost purpose. I lost some purpose. Um, this started with the pandemic. So this is some of the stuff that I talked about already. So you can watch the other videos if you want to watch longer things. Um, but it's, uh, it started with the pan, it, it started a little bit before that. Um, but then it really happened during the pandemic. Just, there was no purpose. I mean, just no direction, no idea where I was going. So anyway, so the sense of purpose is an absolute necessity. We all have to have a sense of purpose. We have to figure out where we're going. That's part of my journey right now is figuring out what my sense of purpose is. Um, I know what it used to be. Um, I'm trying to get it back. Maybe the course changed a little bit and I need to come up with uh, a little bit of a different sense of purpose, you know, so I'm doing my best to find that out right now. Um, but one of the things that I, I think I need uh, to work on um, more um, is leading by example. Um, and I think partly that making these videos is kind of doing that, like make your own videos. And, and share with people what you're dealing with and see if you can help others. Um, I'm just trying to, you know, uh, lead by, I want to lead by example. I used to try to lead by example. Um, growing as a leader has a lot of pains involved because you don't do everything right and you upset people sometimes and, and people don't understand your decisions. And so being a leader of anything is can be or being in charge of anything can be very very difficult at times and I've had numerous experiences that have taught me a lot um, one particular one that I I've told other people that you can't please everybody all the time and that's something that I always have to keep in mind because it's 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 an easy thing to forget so but but what also happens when I'm dealing with um, having knowledge and having information and having experience is sometimes imparting it on people that don't want it imparted on, don't want it to be imparted, don't want that imparted on them. Yeah, I think that's what I want to say. Um, 
And so that's something that I think I really need to not think. It's something that I actually need to work on. I need to just stop and not impart knowledge, <laughs> whether I'm right or wrong, um, on it, um, on people that actually, you know, aren't looking for it. And, uh, and that's so hard to do because if you see, it's like a parent with their kids. They see their kids are going to, you know, possibly screw something up. So they want to tell their kid what you should do or what you shouldn't do. And the kid doesn't like it. And so it ends up that, you know, the kid resents it and uh, the kid does the opposite anyway. So it's like kind of we all have to fall into our own um, uh, pitfalls here and there to kind of learn from our mistakes and then hopefully seek out information and then maybe come back and ask, you know, do you have any advice? And then that's the time when I think I should, then, then I should share. But I have a tendency to want to help too much and sometimes it's not welcome. So that's something I'm working on that I've discovered in this process or I've learned in this process and I'm trying to get better at that. Um, so one of the things that I need to do is reprogram some stuff. One of the, I've been watching a lot of stuff. And one of the interesting things that I've heard um, a number of times now that have been in, in um, um, coming from uh, scientists and, and researchers and stuff is that when we are uh, young, like very young, seven years old and younger, um, we actually, our brain, we have two hemispheres in our brain. And um, one side of our brain is uh, emotional. So um, the, uh, the right side of our brain, I think, is, is emotional. And then the left side of our brain is more intellectual. And so the right side controls your left side of your body. The right side controls the left side of your body. Did I just say that right? I think I did. Let me say it one more time, just in case I didn't. The right side controls the left. The left side controls the right. Okay, got that. I got that. Now I know I have that right. Um, so one of the things that happens when you're younger than seven is that we are somehow programmed that the two hemispheres of our brain work together and it's basically in record mode and it's in um, there's not a lot of discussion um, there's questioning and stuff like that but it's more or less in record mode so it records everything that goes on around us so our influences from what i'm understanding again i'm not a doctor i'm not a scientist i'm not a researcher and i'm learning this from other people and i hope they're right and if they aren't i don't think it's there's any harm involved nobody's going to get hurt by hearing this information so i'm just passing it on so it's in record mode so what your environment is around you and what you're dealing with could be family stuff could be a lot of family stuff actually um, could be how people do things around you, um, all that stuff. We're very, very much influenced by that. And our brain, um, the subconscious brain is literally a hard drive, just like your computer. And it just stores the information. So when you have things later on that con contradict that, the subconscious already has that information stored and it's not easily changeable. So um, that's what makes it a little bit difficult because if we, you know, I, I'm very fortunate. I came from a family of, I of, uh, had really good parents and you know, everybody has their issues from time to time, of course, but I had really good parents um, that really care about me. And I say I had, I mean, I do. My dad is amazing. Um, and my mom passed away in 2012. Um, wonderful people and I've been, I was very lucky, but of course, every family has their thing. Everybody has their habits. Everybody has their way of doing things, good and bad. And until you're seven years old, you're basically recording all that stuff and it stays there. So that makes things difficult because there'll be a lot of times where, you know, you somebody will say like, uh, I'll make up a make up a name and say like, you know, Billy, Billy's friends say to Billy, you know, uh, they meet Billy's father and say, wow, you're just like your father. And, uh, and Billy would be like, I can't believe you say that. I'm nothing like my father. But, but the problem is, is that the subconscious 
is what is controlling a lot of what you do. And so many of those things, you don't even realize you do it because it was programmed into you when you were young by your parents, your family, other people around you, that kind of stuff. So it's there, but it's like you don't purposely do it. So then you don't notice that you do it. That makes sense. And that could be good stuff and that could be bad stuff. It could be all kinds of things. And uh, so there's some things that I've understood that you can um, reprogram some things, which I'm going to try. I am absolutely going to try. Um, I haven't tried it yet, but I will report back when I f start doing this, is that one, you can reprogram the subconscious a bit um, in what they call theta. Um, and theta is basically that, that um, state that you're in as you're falling asleep at night you lay down, you start falling asleep, but you haven't gone into a deep sleep yet. So having on like earbuds and having positive messages or, you know, things that you want to change and that kind of thing is a very effective time, I guess, to start trying to reprogram things. So that that's one. Um, two is something that's very helpful for me because it absolutely applies to music and what we do to keep getting better but this has nothing to do with just musicians so this is for everybody um, is that we program habits when we are practicing something we tried to play it uh, as perfectly as possible and then we reinforce it we do it over and over and over and over and over again like crazy some people practice until they get something right but then the people that actually will keep getting a lot better are the ones that practice over and over and over again until they can't get it wrong. And that means you programmed your subconscious to do something a certain way. And that means that it is difficult to actually screw those things up later. Um, so we play, we subconsciously play well as long as we're in physical shape and we're doing everything that we're supposed to be to keep keep ourselves in good playing shape but that for the general person that means having habits that we can uh that will fire like um start ignite when we are doing something that come to us subconsciously that we don't think about but they are habit in us and as long as we keep ourselves in good shape and our brain is working fine and everything is happening then those things should work properly so uh, a for instance is that if you were unhappy and this is something that I'm focused on if you were unhappy just telling yourself throughout the day that I'm happy I'm happy I am happy I'm happy you just keep saying it over and over again. And even, you know, I'm sure that if you think of things that make you happy, it probably sticks even more. But if you keep telling yourself you're happy, you're going to start feeling like you're happy. It's, it starts working. You start reprogramming that unhappiness that you have in your subconscious and it starts supposed to be getting better. That's what they're saying. Now, I don't know if that's actually going to happen, but I'm going to give it a try because the whole name of the game here is I'm trying to better myself. I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to get back to where I was. So, uh, then the other thing is, is, uh, is energy psychology, which is really weird. It's called, it's like super learning. And this is the interesting part. So you have two hemispheres to your brain, your right controls your left, your left controls your right, as I said before. So if I have my right hand up, my left hemisphere of my brain is controlling my right hand. I'm waving, waving at you right now. Hi, how you doing? All right. So then I take that right hand and if I start doing this and I cross the center part in my head to the other hemisphere, the other hemisphere starts taking over to control my arm. Even though it's attached, I guess, on this side, this is what I'm learning, is that even if it's attached on this side, if it has crossed over, the other side of your brain starts taking over for it, controlling it. So what the suggestion is with super learning is that if you take both sides and you integrate them like you have when you're seven years of age and younger so that they're working together, the hemispheres are working together, 
you actually can have a faster way of reprogramming your brain. I'm very interested in this. So if you take your hands and basically you're crossing them over so that they're, they're crossed in the center and you also cross your feet at the same time, which you can't see, but I've got my legs crossed. This puts you in a much more relaxed state of just going to the other sides and just getting the hemispheres to work together. And so that means that I guess you're more susceptible to being able to learn things and actually have them stick and changing things. And so from what I'm understanding from what I've been watching is that um, this new programming could, I don't have experience at this, I'm going to try it because it ain't going to hurt a thing, <laughs> but it could happen. You can have reprogramming in 10 to 15 minutes. That seems a little far-fetched for me, just to put it out there. Um, but I'm going to try it because why not? It's not going to hurt me. I'm not going to physically hurt myself. I'm not going to mentally hurt myself by trying this. So I'm going to try that. Um, that whole theta state is almost like a, a, that I was talking about the first thing is kind of putting yourself into a self-hypnosis state. That's kind of you're in a self-hypnosis state, I guess they say at that point. So that's why you're very susceptible to uh, taking suggestions and learning things. So I'm going to try that. Um, I think one of the other things that I want to do um, is I, and I challenge you to do the same thing, is if you're trying to make yourself more happy and you're trying to feel better about things, um, I'm going to write down five things that I'm unhappy with. And then I'm also going to try to come up with ways of making things better to make myself more happy and not focus on those unhappy things now or change those unhappy things. Now, don't get me wrong. Sometimes there's unhappiness from, you know, uh, relationship problems or something like that, that maybe you can't change, you know, cause there's someone else involved and, and you don't have the sole power to change it. You have to have the other person involved. Um, so that, that can be also a major factor that can make you unhappy. But in that sense, we have to figure out how to get past that. We have to figure out how we can make ourselves happy, not dwell on that kind of stuff and then get, get, go forward. Um, you know, which is very hard to do. Don't get me wrong. Um, we've all been there. And, uh, so that's a difficult thing, but those things that make you unhappy that no one else has control over, but you, how can you make yourself happy again? How could you make yourself do things that maybe you're not doing right now that actually could make you happy down the line and change those things for the better? I think that's really important. A uh, couple last things I wanted to say, because I want to keep this one shorter, is that um, stress can be good. I mentioned this in my other video. Um, our body is set up so that we have stress kick in when we are in a situation that um, we don't have a lot of control over and we're either trying to survive or we're trying to get through it. So stress happens. Now, um, an example that I heard was like, we're, we're built to run away from a saber toothed tiger, you know, stress kicks in. The problem that so many of us have nowadays is that the stress is ongoing and it keeps getting worse and worse and worse, or it stays constant. The stress causes stress hormones to be activated in your body. And what that does is most of uh, from what it was explained, how it was explained, is that most of the blood in your body is in your torso, in your best, especially in your stomach. Um, and so when you get stress, <clears throat> it focuses into your stomach. Uh, when, when you get stressed, sorry, backwards. So most of the blood is in your body. When you get stressed, you feel more things in your stomach, like a like almost maybe maybe a pit. I think that's kind of what they're saying. And because the blood actually goes to your extremities, it goes to your arms and legs. And so it's, again, running away from the saber toothed tiger um, that it does that. So it takes the blood away from your, your gut area. 
it also takes it, I think, out of your brain more because it goes to your extremities. So for lack of a better way of saying it, and I'm saying it in a humorous way, so, um, but it kind of, when you're stressed, it makes you stupid. Um, it makes you not be able to think clearly or properly because you're basically in flight mode um, and you're not, you're trying to run away from something and you're stressed out. So it goes to your limbs and then you're actually trying to survive basically. And if you're in that state all the time, you're not thinking clearly, it's not working. So it's therefore making you stupid in a way. And like I said, in a silly way, I'm saying that. And, um, but it's, it's like your brain's not working properly, period. Um, stress hormones are released and it lowers our immune system. So um, that causes health issues. Um, and so these things are very important to try to figure out how to get past stress. Um, again, small bits of stress is good because it pushes us. Um, it makes us, uh, makes us um, on the short term, makes us think about things, uh, causes uh, some impact on what do I have to do? How do I have to do it? But sometimes we're not thinking clearly because we're stressed. And so the last part of that that I'm going to add that this guy didn't talk about, but I was talking about my last video about things, is that that causes our energy that we're giving off um, to not be happy, not be joyful, uh, not make people around us feel good about us. It actually causes people to feel, you know, you're uncomfortable, you're stressed, you're frustrated, you're, you're all these things, you're unhappy. And so then that takes that and then um, it, it emanates from you and then makes things worse. It just makes everything worse. So that whole thing in my last video talking about breath work, um, some manifesting, some, uh, some a form of meditation through that breath work, uh, that kind of thing I think might help. Again, I'm no expert on any of this. I'm going through this journey right now and I'm just sharing it to see if it works and trying to see if I can help myself and help myself get in a better place um, because I need to be. So that's that for today. I'm going to wrap it up. It's a short, shorter video than my marathon two other videos, but I hope those other two videos had some merit for a lot of people. And I hope if you haven't watched them, you will, will watch them. And then the last thing that I want to ask you is um, if you think this is helpful at all, um, could you please like if you're watching this on Facebook, um, click the video so that you watch it on YouTube. And then if you could like and subscribe, I would really help. I really appreciate that because um, it just kind of gives me an idea that this is doing something for somebody uh, besides the messages. I appreciate the messages also. Um, I would love to see things in the comments, whether that's on Facebook or even better on the YouTube video itself on YouTube. Um, you know, having, having comments and interaction really helps me to know that I'm not wasting my time, you know, interact, uh, just uh, putting myself out there and, uh, um, yeah. I'm trying to approach all this from a place of strength because I always try to be strong about things, but there's things right now that I feel weak about. And uh, I don't think admitting that is a bad thing because I'm trying to get back to my place of strength. And I think that um, I need to somehow tear myself down, not in a negative way. I'm just talking about rebuilding. Um, do you remember, remember um, if you're old enough to remember this, there used to be a show called The Six Million Dollar Man, and uh, it was a guy named, an astronaut named Steve Austin, and he was uh, seriously injured in an accident, and so they said they can rebuild him stronger and faster than ever before. That's what I'm working at. <laughs> I'm working to be Steve Austin, damn it. <laughs> so anyway, that's the scoop. Uh, I hope this helps in some small way. And we'll check you next time. Thanks.